It's September, and school bells are ringing once again. We're continuing with our series of profiles of local schools to check in and see what new initiatives they may be rolling out in the wake of a couple of challenging years brought on by the COVID pandemic. Today, we paid a visit to the Maple Street School in Manchester, an independent school that offers instruction to students from pre-kindergarten through eighth grade. This is a special year for Maple Street, which is celebrating its 25th year of operation since its founding in 1998. It's been at its present location since 2003. It's also the start of his second year as the head of school for Dan Skoglund, who took over that post last year as the school's fifth head of school. We sat down with Mr. Skoglund for a conversation about what was new this year and other education-related questions. This is your second year now as the head of yes. Maple Street. How different is it uh, approaching year two compared to last year, year one? I mean, there must be a yeah. whole different mindset, I would imagine. Going yeah, into it. no, it's a good question. It's, I would say on, on the positive side, it's nice to know, you know, where the bathroom is on day one and you already have built in relationships. Um, you get to know people's families, um, not only parents, but colleagues. Um, relationships are very important to me. So to have a year to develop those. So when you go into year two, um, it's just an easier ask when you're trying to build culture and the culture is a bit thickened um, before you show up. I'd say the hard part, you know, versus year one is um, people start to <laughs> You know, I guess the grace period is over, the honeymoon period. You know, they want to see, they want to see change uh, quickly. Uh, everyone has an idea or can be an expert on education and kids. Um, and I found this year sometimes just, you know, reminding people to, you know, be patient, stay, stay true to the process. We're doing a strategic plan this year, so that takes time. Um, but yeah, year two, it's nice uh, just to be here, be settled and know the community from the onset. So uh, what new plans, programs, initiatives are you considering uh, or launching already yeah. this year that uh, folks might want to know about? So the, the, the first one um, that'll take time, we, we are in the early stages of executing the strategic plan. So every school, and every school's different, but schools do that on a cyclical basis. Maple Street, because um, we're actually just concluding our 25th year in existence, so it's our 25th anniversary this year, um, it's, it's a really important time to engage in that process, to kind of ask ourselves, what are the key ingredients of Maple Street? What makes it a unique culture? And really trying to do right by the founders and stay true to the DNA, but also evolve and change in a thoughtful manner and stay current, right? The school was founded in 1998, but 2023 is is very different uh, in terms of children's development, pedagogy, curriculum, so forth and so on. So that is something that we'll do this year. It's a full team effort, you know, parents, administration, board, faculty, everyone leans in and we move the, move the needle along. So that, that's a big focus. Uh, number two, in terms of just a new program that I'm excited about, uh, we have a formal partnership with Merck Farmland Center um, I've got to know Rob Terry, their executive director, who's a great guy. I actually personally just spend a lot of time up there with my family. Um, I'm, I believe deeply in the power of the outdoors in terms of kids, uh, not only from an intellectual standpoint, but also just building resiliency and just being outside and solving problems and being aware of the world um, around them. So our entire school is going to go up there in the fall and in the spring, every single grade and we'll spend an entire day up there. They'll execute the curriculum, but we'll be there to kind of help monitor it and make sure it goes well. So, a, you know, a kindergartner is going to experience it very different than an eighth grader, but they're still going to have a worthwhile experience. So we're excited about that program. Another initiative we started that I'm excited about is we have an elective block. We call it an elective or flex block at the end of the day. And we've implemented that really to try to benefit our upper school students. We're K through eight, but that's a pretty big range, you know, in terms of child development. So we want to build a little bit more of a bridge from Maple Street to high school and give an eighth grader, give a seventh grader, give a sixth grader a little bit more autonomy and flexibility in what they learn. So that block is highly entrepreneurial and structured just to really benefit kids. 
there are subjects ranging from cooking to coding to 3D printing to fly fishing to just a study hall block, but really a time for kids to reset and engage in their own intellectual passions. What, are, what is your enrollment like at this point? Uh, we're it's all together. Right, this year we're uh, 154 students. So every year we're roughly right now 150, 155. Wow. And I'm assuming there must be a waiting list as well. So for a, yeah. Past. Yep. Uh, most, almost every class we have a waiting list. Um, this year we don't have a waiting list. We have some room in kindergarten and first grade. So those are soft spots. Um, but overall throughout the entire school, we're fully enrolled and we started a pre-K program last year. It was our first year up at Southern Vermont Art Center and that program has done very well and there's a lot of interest in, and demand for that. Yeah, there's a huge shortage of yeah, uh, capacity yeah, for yeah. that age group. Exactly, uh, huge shortage. So we're excited to fill some of that market. I guess you weren't here at the school when the COVID pandemic, you know, blew through in 2020 up through 2022. But I'm just wondering, um, do you see any lingering impacts from that? Uh, I mean, as I read about education across the country, one of the things I'm struck by is the fact that uh, a lot of schools or, or school leaders seem to be concerned about students catching up from lost class time. I mean, your situation here might be a little bit different. I yeah. I don't recall if, if uh, Maple Street reopened fairly quickly. Yeah. I'm just wondering, um, both on the education side and maybe also maybe on the mental health side, do you see some lingering areas of concern that you're at least thinking about and aware of? Yeah, no, that's a great question, Andrew. Yes, very much so. And my previous role as the assistant head of school and dean of students at a boarding school. So I had to manage the school through COVID. Uh, and at, in some elements, being a boarding school, it was we could we could tighten our grip, so to speak, uh, on the outside world. You know, so we can test students and whatnot. But just logistically, it was a really hard uh, push. Um, I think educators everywhere, those were very challenging times. Educators did not really get a break, uh, can't work from home, so to speak. Um, so I think the first, uh, I, I guess I would say consequence that I still see is uh, a lot of teachers in independent schools and public schools, K-3 schools, high schools are, are pretty tired. There's still some residue there from a really trying time. Maple Street, obviously I wasn't here, but did a wonderful job. The leadership at Maple Street, the head, the board, parents, students uh, opened up fairly quickly and executed their curriculum both online and then it opened up in person pretty quickly. But what I see, particularly at this age group, is the mental health piece that I think students, you know, it's a, it's a global pandemic. Um, so in terms of social outlets, I think kids are still learning how to behave, how to interact with their peers in a classroom space, how to navigate structure. You know, we're a mainstream school. We ask students to do a lot of different things throughout the day, but they have to um, do those within the constraints of a structured program. And I think when you're home for a couple of years, not only your home is, you know, completely flipped on its head, but society, right? You know, how, how you interact in town, in the greater community, there's a big pause button. So if that happens when you're a two or a three-year-old, and then all of a sudden now you're a six or seven-year-old and you're re-engaging structure, but you miss that time to get trained, so to speak, and educated and have all of these adults holding the inside and kind of helping you navigate that, it can be highly stressful I have found that transitions, not only for kids, but for adults, um, are really hard. Whether you move from a new place, welcoming someone into your family, any type, starting a new job, any type of transition is hard. And this was a massive transition. You're going from a, basically, you know, we're operating as usual to shut down essentially March of 2020. And then kind of this hybrid weird space that we're all in and then we're in person and things are kind of back to normal. So it's not shocking that kids are struggling with that and parents are struggling with it. So yeah, the mental health piece, the socio-emotional curriculum that we run here is a huge focus on not just 
are you learning science and math and whatnot, but how are you behaving as an adult, or sorry, as, a, as an adolescent, as a child, but also the adults in the building? How are you interacting with your peers, so forth and so on? So I hope that answers it, but it, yeah, I mean, it's something I see every day. Um, yeah. yeah, it seems to be, you know, a lingering uh, issue uh, yeah. across the board, and, you know, not just here in Vermont, but all across the country, I'm sure. Right. And many other countries as well. Yeah, um, and I would imagine too, even like academically, there's, you know, literacy and math are the two key, I guess, most tangible blocks to point to that there's, you know, some catching up to do with yeah. certain age levels. So it's not only the social emotional piece, but also the, the academic, more progressive um, disciplines where you got to be meeting benchmarks to kind of progress through it. And if for two years there's a delay, you're going to feel those effects. And we are. I wanted to ask you what you thought about um, the emergence of the uh, large language model programs like Chat GPT and uh, uh, I guess Google's Bard, and there are a couple of other uh, yeah. platforms out there. Uh, just to shift gears somewhat here, um, I, I, I've heard two schools of thought about that in, ter in terms of education, and maybe a K through eight school. This is not such a big factor right. as it would be, let's say it. The high school or, or college, certainly at the college level, but uh, I don't know if you folks have thought about that in some way or another. Like, well, the kids are going to need to under, learn to understand this and yeah. uh, know how to work with it, and maybe harness its positive aspects. At the same time, we certainly don't want them, you know, kind of plagiarizing a, 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 an essay or a term yeah. paper. Yeah, no, it's a it's a really good question. Um, my previous school, we, we talked a lot about it, particularly with college essays and you know high school curriculum around English and history. Here, it's a bit different. I will say we are blessed with our size. So you know each class in the upper school is capped at 18 students. So our English teacher and our civics history teacher really know our students. And many of those students have been here for quite some time. So we know how they write, how they articulate themselves quite well. And it's it's hard to slip through the cracks, you know what I mean? Just that, that low volume allows the teacher to really dig in and understand, walk me through this essay, walk me through this argument. And I will say that, you know, technology is always something that needs to be harnessed, just like screens and phones. I don't think you can just like fully eradicate and say, we're not going to deal with it. You do have to engage it. And as you said, use it for some type of benefit. But at the end of the day, as the head of school, and really, if I was the head of any school, you want young people to learn the skill of articulating themselves, whether, you know, if English, if it's an essay, writing a creative essay, writing, you know, being able to make an argument, being able to express themselves in a thoughtful, articulate way. So you don't want them to just plagiarize and have a machine do that. So that's yeah, something we got to focus on and make sure that it's our kids' voice and that we're educating them on how to gain a better understanding of their own voice, if that makes sense. Yeah, and, and then just finally, I guess I was just wondering if you uh, could summarize for us a little bit about what the basic school philosophy is. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming your, uh, your, your mission, your purpose, your uh, goal is to you know, help students maximize their potential and yeah. uh, you know, grow up in a responsible way and yeah. prepare them for the next level of secondary school. But uh, what, what is there beyond that that you think uh, our listeners ought to know about? Yeah, no, it's, a, it's another good question. I'd say, um, first and foremost, you know, mission and core values are incredibly important to us. And to give you an example, every month this year, we have a different theme, a core value, so to speak. And we actually built that out uh, during our in-service faculty meetings to start the year. So we built it as a, as a team. Everyone had their own voice and we kind of went through, took about an hour, hour and a half where everyone just started throwing words up there. Like, what, what do we want? What do we want this community to be about? Um, so this month we start with respect, which is a key word in our mission statement. So in all school meeting, as well as in classrooms, everywhere in this building, you hear right now a lot about respect. So how do you respect your peers? How do you respect yourself? How do you, how do you respect the Maple Street community? How do you respect the greater Manchester and Southwestern Vermont community? How do you respect the great, greater global community, right? It's a pretty hot summer. <laughs> um, so this theme of respect permeates everywhere, and then we'll move on to different themes as we progress. So next month will be identity. And again, unpack that at a much broader level. 
So that's one element of how we execute that. But I just say, you know, if someone asks me, hey, you know, Maple Street, what is it about? I'd point them to joy, which is a key word in our mission statement, joyful learning. We're a K-3 eight school. The kids are at an important age where they, they need to experience joy. They need to come. They need to earn it. They absolutely need to earn it. Like you can't, it's a two-way street. Having said that, it needs to be joyous. They have to be silly and have fun while being honest and kind and whatnot, but there needs to be joy. And then the other thing I harp on a lot that I believe deeply in is personal and social responsibility. So it's not just about the individual, where they are in math or English or you know athletics or arts. Yes, that's important. We wanna educate each student individually and move them along, but it is also about the greater good, um, the greater community how you impact the school, how you impact others, and are you focused on team or yourself? So we talk about that a lot. And then the last piece is growth, is a key word in our mission statement that this is school. These are kids, they're human beings trying to figure it out. They're not gonna be perfect. They're not a finished product. Where they are today is not where they're gonna be in May. And keep in mind, it's, it's a growth mindset. This is, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And staying focused on making sure kids are when they fail, they learn from it. When they succeed, they get a pat on the back and we just keep moving forward. So I think I would highlight those to someone who wanted to learn a little bit more about our school. All right. All right. Dan Skoglund, head of school at Maple Street School. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. Good to have you. Okay. Maple Street will have an enrollment of 154 students this year and has 27 teachers and staff members. For the GNET TV News Project, I'm Andrew McKeever.